Fedor said to me, I'm thinking about competing again, what do you think? Wow, Fedor is coming back. Unbelievable. Where is he going to pop up? Who's going to sign him? Who's going to compete against him? Fighting in the main event, the last ever! When I hear the name Fedor, I still think of the greatest heavyweight of all time. You talk about the Mount Rushmore of MMA, he is number one on that mount. On New Year's Eve in Japan, the last emperor, Fedor Emelianenko, returns for his first fight in three and a half years. When Fedor fights in the main event and it goes black and that Fedor music comes on, man, it's going to be like, whew. It's a great fight. All of us is on his shoulder. To a lot of people, that would be too much of a burden. I think Fedor welcomes that. Fedor is going to fly for the first time in three years. It's going to be a huge event. Fedor, Return of the Last Emperor, begins now. Catch you, New Year's Eve. Fedor Emelianenko, the winner. New Year's Eve is going to be electric. Fedor loves Russia. I mean, he is definitely all about Russia. I think that's why everyone respects him. Fedor Emelianenko is a Russian treasure, a sportsman ahead of his time. Yet, it's his character that resonates across the globe. Traits that illuminate a warrior cut from a bygone era. A man that lives his life with classic Russian values and a deep love of country. He is stoic, he is quiet, he is humble, he is all the virtues that Russians and Russian fighters project. Fedor was raised very simple. It wasn't like a, a privileged life. He didn't come from a wealthy family or anything. And he grew up in Stereosco, where it's a very hard life. Друзья, школа, учителя, которые меня обучали и воспитывали совместно, конечно, помимо родителей. Те, которые смогли, те, которые оставили след в моей жизни, люди. Ну и, конечно, тренеры. Федор в 11 лет пришел в спортивный класс, который тренировал я. Федор, уступая по физическим кондициям многим детям, но он их превосходил по бойцовским качествам. Именно, то есть, брал характером. 
Coach Voronov had far more than a young fighter with potential in his Starry Oskol gym almost 20 years ago. Fedor Emelianenko ultimately left his rural hometown to revolutionize the mixed martial arts game. From 2001 to 2010, Fedor dominated the sport of MMA with an incredible 28-fight unbeaten streak, a run that included wins over the best talent in the world and cemented his status as one of the greatest fighters of all time. Fedor, in his prime, was the unquestioned emperor of the heavyweight division. Fedor was one of the guys responsible for bringing pride to his heyday. When he turned it on, he was so explosive. He dropped a lot of guys. I think you can make a case for him being one of the greatest fighters of all time because of the guys that he's competed against. One of Fedor's most memorable moments came in pride, beating Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira to win the heavyweight Grand Prix title in 2004. I was sitting ringside watching these wars with Noguera, and I was just watching Noguera get punished by Fedor. Like, Fedor would crack him so hard, and from ringside, you would think Noguera's skull was going to crush. It was the culmination of a tournament in which he defeated Kevin Randleman in the quarterfinals after an epic comeback from a dangerous head-first body slam. Oh, my God, he just broke Fedor's neck, and Fedor came out of it, finished Kevin. Fedor proceeded to defend his heavyweight title against some of the best fighters on the planet, including Mirko Krokop, Mark Coleman, and Mark Hunt. Pride was far above everybody else's heavyweight division. Minotauro, Mark Coleman, Krokop, Fedor beat all of them. Fedor was doing more than just dominating the sport. He was winning in a manner that evoked shock, awe, and fear. The crowd could be going crazy. He would have a dead stare, almost a cathedral calm. There was something so deep within his faith and his mystique that just translates. It still gives me goosebumps to think about it because he was just one of those guys who was just that unnerving. People were afraid of this guy. He had that Mike Tyson-esque where when he got into the ring, people were like, oh, this, is, this guy is going to hurt me. After competing non-stop since his youth, Fedor retired in 2012 with a record of 34 wins and four losses. Regarded as a national sports hero, he took a position with the government, helping advance mixed martial arts in Russia. Putin is a sportsman himself, so he connected with Fedor and said, hey, you know, you retired, you want a job? And Fedor was like, okay. Плюс работа с молодыми бойцами. Это все было на Федоре. То есть четыре года ему было очень тяжело в плане организаторском, чтобы развивать этот вид спорта в России. It was early in 2015 when Fedor said to me, I think about competing again, what do you think? And I'm like, was that what you want to do? He's like, I think so, maybe one more time. And I said, okay, one? He goes, maybe two, maybe three. I think Fedor missed competing. And he was like, you know, I think uh, it's, it's maybe time to compete again. So I think, okay, he's got the itch. He told me, he goes, I had to go ask Vladimir for permission. To me, that's a, that's a very unique story, right? Can you imagine if uh, a fighter wanted to fight in America? Listen, hold on, I need to go talk to Obama and, uh, and ask him for permission to fight again. With President Putin's blessing, Fedor is now returning to Japan on New Year's Eve with a much larger mission in mind for his sport and country. Я решил вернуться, потому что э, желание биться, наверное, у меня в крови. Зачем желание выступать и зачем честь своей страны? Мы еще побьемся во славу России. When he announced his comeback, everybody was so inspired. Wow, unbelievable! Fedor is coming back. It took quite a long time for Fedor to decide where he was going to fight. Did Dana White ever call you? Fedor. <laughs> Общение, э, расслабление, 
Ну, просто приятно. Пытать друг друга будем. Нам необходимо восстанавливаться, баня нам помогает в этом. Fedor is dialing his body back into peak form in preparation for his return to competition. The last emperor's services were in high demand. It took quite a long time for Fedor to decide where he was going to fight. And there was tons of offers. People know that I'm close to Fedor, so my phone starts blowing up from every little organization to other big organizations calling me trying to, to get his services. So we discussed all the, the uh, pluses and minuses of each organization. Did Dana White ever call you? No. Нет. Дана не звонил, но представители UFC звонили. А что касается UFC, ну UFC должно сначала научиться уважать. Fedor decided to join the Ryzen Fighting Federation, a new Japanese organization led by Nobuyuki Sakikabara, the founder of Pride. It's not just about the money. At the end of the day, Mr. Saki Kibara showed Fedor the respect that Fedor deserves. Поэтому одна из причин, по которой я вернулся, возвращаясь на битву в Японию, это то, что собирается лучшая команда. Вернулась команда Прайда, организовывает новое большое шоу Ryzen. News of Fedor's first fight back was delivered at Dynamite. Bellator's biggest event of the year this past September. Mr. Saki Kabara, the founder of Pride, an honor to have you here. What do you have to say for the fans? On this New Year's Eve, we will have a big event in Japan. Oh, I have one more big announcement. Fighting in the main event of that night, the last This is an unbelievable moment. You had a worldwide audience watching. Half a billion people, you know, available in 140 countries around the world. And to have Fedor walk down that ramp, I mean, I got goosebumps, man. I mean, seriously. I will see you New Year's Eve uh, on Spike TV. When I came back, I was from San Jose. Я услышал, что люди рады тому, что рады тому, что начинает существование Ryzen и рады моему возвращению. Было здорово. Я знаю, что в этом зале очень переживала моя жена Оксана. Первое мое ощущение это был протест. Конечно, я пыталась говорить, что он же уже завершил свою карьеру и обещал не биться. A day before Fedor departs for a month-long training trip to Holland, he spends time with family. We are on the Soborn площадь in Kremlin. Why is this important? It's the heart of Russia. It's our history. It's our saint. Of course, I am very nervous. I am very nervous. And now, in the midst of the new year, I can't even imagine how I am feeling about this event. comes many times to Holland to do training. All the rust is on his shoulder. The grizzly is now coming out. In Holland, we only eat only for the purpose of raising a little bit of the level of the weapon with the weapon. Дело в том, что там в Голландии есть хорошие спарринг партнеры, бойцы, которые выступают в К1. On New Year's Eve, the last emperor returns to the field of battle. His mission, as a sportsman, as a warrior, now carries an additional challenge. 
A big part of Fedor coming back and especially fighting in Japan for Ryzen on New Year's Eve was the opportunity to bring some young Russian fighters up with him to open the door for these young guys. So Mr. Saiki Kabara agreed to help these young Russian fighters. They're all going to be on the card New Year's Eve. And you're going to see the next Fedor born, I think, out of Team Fedor. Это очень трудолюбивые, талантливые ребята. И они стараются сделать все, чтобы стать настоящими чемпионами. У меня хорошие друзья, у меня хорошие, замечательные отношения с моими друзьями, с Питером, с Хансом, с другими ребятами. Team Fedor arrives in Amsterdam, greeted by his Dutch coaches. Old friends reunited with the goal of returning Emelianenko to peak form. He's now 39. The recovery time, it's uh, sometimes is different. Therefore, we do a lot about nutrition. Because now very short training. Now we need vitamin C. The grizzly is now coming out. <coughs> the grizzly will take. And then the grizzly, then the grizzly go to winter sleep. Go. What I like is how they give it to the general work. How they give attention to each fighter. И насколько он, они грамотно э, объясняют технику. Striking on the kickbox training. Don't stand still, yes, come on. That's kickboxing style. He likes it the most. He comes many times to Holland to do training. Thank you. After low kick, step back. Come on. Peter, every Каждую секунду, каждую минуту, каждое, не знаю, каждое движение хочет донести. Доносит и хочет донести до ребят. Если он видит где-то у кого-то что-то не получается, он тут же стоит рядом. When you see the Alowski fight, he was in big trouble for one minute and 30 seconds. One amazing punch and Alowski was down. You, you never know sometimes what, what's happening with Fedor and what he's going to do in the fight. Fedor's first day in Holland is capped by a 9 p.m. training session with his teammates, Anatoly and Valentin, in the foggy suburbs of Amsterdam. Сколько вот именно ему нужны острые ощущения, вот этот где-то почувствовать еще раз мандраж, выйти на ринг, почувствовать еще раз вкус победы. То есть, как бы походить по лезвию ножа, как говорится. Здесь в Голландии. Ну, если бы не Федор, я бы, наверное, здесь бы меня не было. А здесь очень интересно, очень. Ну и мне кажется, я здесь расти буду быстро. Очень хорошие ребята. Спасибо, Федя. Большое. Спасибо, Федя. It's one of a kind. Maybe once in 50 years. So I think in the next Fedor. They're not born yet. We have to uh, cherish him for a long, long time now. It'll be great to have the last emperor back in the game because he's one of the best fighters the sport has ever seen. Fedor Emelianenko, the consummate Russian sportsman, will be seeking victory once again in Japan on New Year's Eve for himself and for his country. It's going to be a huge audience here at home, in a bar, in a restaurant, maybe in the streets. Fighting in the main event! All Rusk is on his shoulder. All Rusk is watching this fight. The last Emperor! To show our country. All the rest of it is coming from this.